Black Beauty, Chapter 4, Birchwick Park. At this time, I used to stand in the stable, my coat was brushed every day till it shone like the rook's wing. Early in May, there came a man from Squire Gordon's who took me away to the hall. My master said, Goodbye, Darkie. Be a good horse and always do your best. I could not say goodbye, so I put my nose into his hand. He patted me kindly. I left my first home. I lived some years with Squire Gordon. I may as tell you something about the place. Squire Gordon's Park skirted the village of Birtwick. It was entered by a large iron gate which stood the first lodge and you trotted along the smooth road between clumps of large old trees. Soon you passed another lodge and another gate which brought you to the house and the gardens. Beyond this lay a home paddock, the old orchard and the stables. There was an accommodation for many horses and carriages, but I only, need, I only described the stable into which I was taken. It was very roomy with four good stalls. A large swinging window opened into this yard. It, this made it pleasant and airy. The first stall was a large square one shut behind with a wooden gate. The others were common stalls. Good stalls, but not nearly so large. My stall had a low rack for hay and a low manager for corn. It was called a loose box because the horse that was put in that was put into it was not tied up but left loose to do as he liked. It is a great thing to have a loose box. Into this fine bo box, clean, sweet and airy, the groom put me. I never in my life was in a better box and the sides were not so high but that I could see through the iron rails at the top all that went on the man gave me some nice oats and patted me spoke kindly then went away when I had eaten my corn I looked around the store next to mine stood a little fat grey pony with a thick mane and a tail a very pretty head and a pert little nose putting my head up onto the iron rails at the top of my box, I said, How do you do? What is your name? I turned around as far as his halter would, as far as his halter would allow, and held up his head and said, My name is Merrylegs. I'm a very handsome. I carry young ladies on my back, and sometimes I take our mistress out onto the low chair. They think a great deal with me, and so does James. Are you going to li live next door to me in the box? Yes, I replied. Well then, he said, I hope you are good tempered next door to me. I do not like anyone who bites. Just then the horse's head looked from over the stall and beyond. The ears were laid back and the eye looked rather ill tempered. The this tall chestnut mare with a long handsome neck looked across me and said, So it is you that have turned me out of my box. It is not a very strange thing for a colt like you to come and turn a lady out of her own home. I beg your pardon, I said. I have turned no one out. The man who brought me here put me here, and I have nothing to do with it. And as to me being a colt, I am, ter I am turned four years old. I am a grown-up horse. I never yet have words with horse or mare. It is my wish to live at peace. Well, she said, we shall see. Of course, I do not want to have words with a young thing like you. I said no more. In the afternoon, when she went out, Merrylegs told me all about the mare. The thing is, said Merrylegs, Ginger has a bad habit of biting and snapping. That's why she is called Ginger. When she was in the loose box, she used to snap very much. She snapped very much. One day she bit James in the arm and made it bleed. And so Miss Flora and Miss Jessie, who were very fond of me, were afraid to come into the stable. They used to bring me nice things to eat, an apple or a carrot or a piece of bread. But after Ginger stood in that box, they dared not to come, and I missed them very much. I hope you do not bite or snap, that they will now come again. 
I told him I never bit anything but grass, hay and corn. I could not think of what pleasure Ginger found in it. Well, I don't think she does find pleasure in it, said Mary Lex. It's just a bad habit. She said no one would ever kind her, and that's why she would not bite. Of course, it's a very bad habit. But I am sure if all she says be true, she, she must have been very ill used before she came. And our master never uses a whip if horse behaves himself. So I think she must be good tempered here. She might be good tempered here. You see, he said with a wise look, I'm 12 years old. I know a great deal. And I can tell you that there is not a better place for a horse around the country than it, this. John is the best groom that ever was. He has been here 14 years, and you never saw such a kind boy as James is. So, it is all Ginger's own fault that she did not stay in that place.